shared in excerpts. Millennials will teach generations. These are just some of the terms that we are going to be in your session. And welcome to the Leader's Edge, where we give actionable insights to help you thrive in a new normal. A fantastic day to all of you. This is Sassy Casas, and I am happy to be back in this episode of The Leader's Edge. We're here again to learn, because that's what we're all about, you see? We're all, we're all about learning. We are in for a wonderful episode tonight. Welcome to Season 5, Episode 4. And welcome to Leader's Edge Season 4, Episode 10. Welcome to The Leader's Edge. And today, it's Season 7, Episode 8. It's called The Leader's Edge. We are here tonight with another amazing leader. Good day, everyone across the world. Uh, welcome to The Leader's Edge. Welcome to the third episode of Season 5 of The Leader's Edge. Welcome. Episode 8. And eight, and season eight, imagine eight, eight, a very special lucky number. And we have an extraordinary guest. She is known among the image consultants worldwide. And why not? And she owns her own personified image consultancy. But I don't want to miss anything. Therefore, I would like to invite Abby Arenas to really just introduce herself from the heart. Hello, Dina, and hello, everyone. Thank you for watching. My name is Abigail Arenas de Leon, and I am a mom, an image consultant, and now a breast cancer survivor. So that one, I'm very, very proud of, guys. Wow, Abby. You know, you have lived a charmed life, and there's no kidding, no kidding. Look, early on, you people really notice you everywhere you go because you have always been a beauty queen. You represented the Philippines in the Miss Universe pageant, and ever since then, your star rose so brightly high up there. And honestly, it was so unexpected, this sudden turn of events. Uh, so, Abby, how did you initially react to the news? Okay, truth is, Dina, I have no history of cancer, or and I've always been an advocate of women's health. So it really came as a surprise. This happened... Um, well, this happened in, in June of 2020. So it was the on, early onset of the pandemic. So I have given a lot of talks on how to prevent breast or even cervical cancer. As far as I can remember, I have always been health conscious. But, you know, in June 2020, a few months after weaning Eli, my youngest, from breastfeeding, he was a little bit over the, the three years old, I found an acne on my breast a small reddish one, and then I could easily ignore it. And then um, at that time, I didn't realize it was already cancer pala. So I was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer with HER2 positive. So it's like my body has cancer and a special factory for cancer. So sometimes, you know, you can just kill the cancer cells, but on my part, we have to, to kill the, the, the mother um, factory of cancer cells. So parang, that was so devastating. So um, for me to get better, we had to do chemo for the cancer and targeted chemotherapy for the, for the factory of the cancer. So it was a very aggressive cancer. And uh, if I didn't treat it, if, if I didn't get treatment right away, it could have, you know, it could have gotten the best of me talaga. So I went through the lowest stage of cancer, but of course, what kept me going, well, somehow the words of Father or Boss, he said, um, the snowstorm lasts forever. And for me, 
Dina, that really is, it was very true because I survived 18 chemotherapy, one mastectomy, and 30 radiation. So my survival is not a guarantee. Well, yesterday, I did my first quarterly ex quarterly scans and I was told by the doctor that I'm, I'm still cancer free so I'm very ecstatic today so we're very happy here in the household today so since that since that experience I decided to live the best life every day so today I'd like to share finding joy you know every day that has become my mission um, you said, Diana, that I have lived a charmed life. I've never been unhappy in my whole life. Pero now, life is even better. Life is even more, should I say, colorful. Because it's such a blessing to wake up every single day, smiling, happy, positive. And that, that so, sorry, Diana, I, I'm, I'm taking all the time. But that's been a, the greatest blessing ever since. Oh, uh, you know, you touch me. You really touch me, my heart, because it's very seldom that you hear people say that nowadays because they always get the double whammy, see, because of the pandemic, okay? What? You get sick and then there's the pandemic. It's already like, what? I already have to worry about this pandemic, not this one. So I, I really love hearing... Um, your testimony now that uh, in fact you believe that now you are living a better life so this must have something to do with your deep faith in god because most people get so devastated and depressed and and they stop smiling it's like oh my god it's the end of the world and and all that but in your case, it's so different. And by the way, I saw the posts that you had in Facebook with your family, and I can see that uh, that must have something to do with your finding joy also, because you have such a loving, supportive family, even though they're not with you all the time, but, but they are always there with you in heart and spirit. So that I... I got it. I got it. So you you got a very strong emotional support as well. Yes. Now, how has this how has this affected your professional life? Your because you're an image consultant, and I know that there are so many corporate clients out there just just waiting for you to to get to <laughs> to teach them and give them consultancy. So how did this affect you? In other words, how long was the hiatus? That there's got to be a hiatus because of the treatments. How long was the hiatus before you could start entertaining projects again with your corporate clients? Diana, you'll be surprised. I did not stop working. Oh. I I did not stop working. On the very second day of my first chemotherapy, I was working. I thought I was going to be down, but then again, the adrenaline of work really made me stood up. And, you know, I was, I was performing. So I, I, was, I was still in, in, that, in, that, in that level of energy. But after that, I would, of course. But pero on the second um, chemotherapy, I lost my hair. I lost all of it. I lost all my eyebrows. And then, but... I think it's the adrenaline. You know how it is, Diana, diba? Pero every time we work, it's like a performance for us. So I was still doing webinar. And then um, when I lost my hair, I started wearing wig. And it was about this short. And nobody noticed that I was wearing wig. That's the funny part. So um, Zoom was very forgiving with my, my wig at the time and they could no one can tell well some close friends they, they knew what I was going through but the clients did not need to know so sometimes the HR the HR con, con, connect I, I will disclose but then during the performance no no participants would even ask me anything about it now it's a little difficult on my end because we talk about image, we talk about beauty, we talk about the importance of, of presence. And yet here I am, parang nakawig ako. Pero in, in my heart, I'm still, very, I'm still being authentic because 
it's still what I believe in. You know, even even if you're feeling down, even if you're feeling, you know, sick with all these medications, I still have the energy to put up the best for my clients. So I think that's that's one learning na ngayon ko lang i-disclose. It's, it, this is my only chance that I can disclose it to everybody. So in last November, when I finished all the treatment, treatments and I got a clear PET scan, I decided to give a webinar to all clients, to everybody, to all the people that I know, what, what I've gone through. So I told them the story. So a lot of people were shocked because they, they didn't even notice that I was going through it. But the higher tools, I think there was ta- a one time, a month and a half, I wasn't, um, but I still did a couple of jobs, but it's not as much. So in that one month and a half, do, that was during the radiation. I found it to be diff- uh, uh, very difficult to in radiation because we did it every single day. I had to do it every single day. So Monday to Friday, and then the rest would be Saturday and Sunday. So that was a time wherein I couldn't make myself really, you know, move and Ang girap, ang girap, ang girap mag makeup. Pero I did it. I think I did. I did two jobs during that radiation treatment. Pero I, I didn't feel like I really stopped working. Even when I was uh, vacationing in the U.S. last, um, I was in the U.S. January to March, and I was working there, guys. And um, I'm just very, very happy that clients would still consider. That was one time I was I was giving a lecture, ganyan, ganyan, and then. Uh, and then I, I got confused with the time because I, ano, eh, kumaga, I was working at night time and morning sa, sa, sa Philippines. Tapos, okay, so let me have my dinner. Ganyan. Tapos, sabi ng isang estudyante, parang, Miss, you mean lunch? Uh, then I had to explain that I'm in the, the, in, the, in, in the different time zone. So, I am so blessed that I still get to do what I love doing. So. Oh, indeed. <laughs> indeed. Uh, I, 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 I got to say amen to that because one of our consultants, Abby, has cancer. Although hers is cancer of the blood, leukemia. And really, she really is flat out. And there were times when the client, of course, it's been scheduled and rescheduled because because of the chemo, but she definitely did not have the energy that you continued to have when you were having uh, all your treatments. She really, really had, that's why we had to get somebody to assist her and do part of her webinar because she could hardly, she could hardly move. And we had to reschedule and reschedule many times, even doing reports, she could not do the report. So what I'm saying is, Truly, truly, Abby, I consider it a great blessing from the Lord that you were able to continue doing what you love to do in spite of the treatments. And even when you were in in America, that is so uh, extraordinary, fantastic. Uh, I'm so happy for that. I praise God for that. So, Abby, uh, as of now, are you what we call... Are you considering doing other things other than just image consultancy or are there other, what we call, are there other projects that you are thinking about in the future? Well, um, just now, before this interview, I was uh, on a meeting with, with a client who are going to have a face-to-face program already. So I am so super, super excited about that. Wow. So right now, well, there's also a book. There's also a book involved. Me and my dad wrote a book. It's all about adolescence. And it's all about parang, parang turning, the, the turning, turning face. So we have that in the pipeline. Oh. And then... Um, I'm just preparing for the face-to-face program. So that's where my all, all my energy. Tapos, guys, after all the pandemic, the cancer, now I am facing, you're going to hear this for, for the first time because I just got this yesterday. I'm facing yeah. another, another, um, another difficulty. I recently learned that I am on a menopausal stage. Kaya pala, I've been getting all these headaches, all this ganyan, ganyan. So because of the chemotherapy that I've received, I'm, I'm going through early menopause. So ngayon, ito pa yung ko. So, so, but still, I am not, I am not devastated, nothing like that. I'm still very hopeful. I'm still, 
I'm still in, in a good place. Yes. Yeah. You know, Abby, other than your faith, I do believe it is your your positive attitude that brings you up, uh, wakes you up every morning, ready to go jump out of bed and really do all those things. And um, you know what? You project that. And that's the reason why your clients love you and all of your participants really adore you. I, I know that because we have been together for the longest time at AICI, Association of Image Consultants International. And it's not only in the Philippines, Abby, you are so well respected and in demand. And as far as consultants, image consultants all over the world, they know you and they love you. And that's, uh, and now I realize it's, it goes beyond beauty, Abby. It's way, way beyond just beauty of face and beauty of voice and posture. No, it's, it's your spirit. It's your positive attitude. It's your kind heart. And that's what makes you stand out among many, many other image consultants around the world. Now, what, because of course of the pandemic, and it means uh, with the cancer, that's, that would be considered a comorbidity. What has, did your doctor give you some kind of tips or guidelines on what precaution, precautions or what things to do to avoid possible uh, getting hit by pandemic or any other sickness that, you know, because you just went through this mm -hmm. really struggle with uh, cancer, but it wasn't really a struggle because of your spirit and, you know, you kept it high. So are there things you are doing now that uh, for people like you and there, I know there are others out there who are also not just getting sick with mm -hmm. COVID-19, but also with other things. And so they would probably want to hear from you because honestly, I look at you and how come you are glowing? How come you are looking even younger? How come you're looking even um, joyful? Because honestly, joyful is way, way beyond happier. So, mm -hmm. so really, Abby, what are those things? that you are doing that I'm sure will help a lot of others also. I, I am prepared for this right now. So I made a list actually, okay. Now, first things first, of course, I've always been healthy since time immemorial. I've always been healthy. I've always had my green juice, you know, my fruits and my vegetables. Of course, I have to take care of myself. But that was, and then I was told I need to exercise more. So I'm gonna do that. So no problem. But my doctor said, my positivity made me win the battle by 50%. Sabi niya. Wow. Sabi niya, because of your positivity, half of the battle's already won. And I was like, oh, so happy. So now I actually prepared five um, simple ways to be that positive, to be in that positive attitude. So if I may share, Dines, okay? Kwento ko lang, kwento ko lang. Okay, number one. My first... Um, First tip on simple ways on how to keep a positive attitude. Number one, surround yourself with positive people. So, yeah. meaning the old saying, birds of the same feather flock together, it can be viewed in two ways. It's either people or people who are similar naturally find each other or people in a group become the same over time. So somehow, one way to stay positive is really to surround yourself with happy people. So, yes. Sometimes we, we, we have to interact with negative people, but then again, my advice is try your best to spend as little as possible because you nakakahawa talaga eh. So, you know, you, it doesn't mean choosing, you will only choose people who, who don't give you the hard truth. It doesn't mean like that, but it does mean that choosing people who try to find the positive even in the most difficult situations. Who, people who actually act with compassion and people who are willing to lift others up rather than bringing people down. You know, we have to find these people. And then once you find them, keep them. They're worth keeping the laga. So the number one tip is surround yourself with positive people. You surround yourself with happy people. So you can actually start it from yourself. 
smiling, you know. So, wag mapagod gumiti. Don't be, don't, don't never get tired of smiling, showing that beautiful smile. So, that's one thing. Second, okay. feel your mind with positive input. Very, very important. The same way that people around, the, the same way that the people you are around change you to be more like them, so it is what you feed our, our mind. So, Listen to positive music and listen to uplifting audio books or podcasts, books that are encouraging, and then watch videos and uh, that are very positive or even movies. You know, I like I, li I like movies na Paw Patrol. You know why? Because they have a very simple plot and every and all the time they, it, everything ends the right way. Parang parang life is so easy. Do not complicate it, de ba? Parang it. It, it just works out. Everything will work out. So that's filling your mind with positive input. Number three, create a routine for the day. Now, sometimes it's easy to think that if you have a routine, parang hindi ka na flexible. But the truth is, routines give us a good fallback structure. We need structure. Even as we work from home, sometimes we feel that, you know, you don't need to clock out kasi 10 o'clock at night, you're still working. But you need to have a routine. A morning routine is especially good for a lot of people since a morning is both when we are most alert and awake and yet sometimes not able to buckle down and get started. Hirap magsimula in the morning sometimes. But sometimes there are also bad days and one can take a personal day off. I mean, I, I do that. Sometimes I wake up so bad, then I decide, okay, this is going to be my personal day off. If you are allowed, like me, I, I'm allowed. Sometimes but I, don't, I don't give training every day, but during the time that I need a day off, I would give it to, to myself. And then routines can um, make us accomplish things without thinking. The fact, well, as a cancer patient, the fact that I'll be able to get up and take a shower and get breakfast, that's already a routine and that already gives me a confidence to start my day right. Ah. And then, number four, be nice to other people. Ah. If, you know, if you are making nice, if, if, if being nice to other people is a regular thing, then it will become a cycle of generosity and happiness. And it can actually make us feel good and then it can cause the feelings around you. And that's exactly what I mean when we don't want any negativity because negativity feeds on more negativity until it becomes overwhelming. So anxiety. So be nice to other people and um, just watch them to pay it forward. It's a very, very good sight. And then finally, number five, practice mindfulness. This one, I have discovered this during the cancer time where in um, I realized that mindfulness is a natural state of being. So throughout our lives, we have been, um, we, frequently we, do, we don't realize that we are in it. Let's say, um, Diana, if you ever, you get, up in the, at, you get up at night and then you try to listen, but ano yon, ano yon? You, 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 you really focus your hearing, you trying to hear on what's going on. That is mindfulness, meaning nothing else matters except for that very particular sound that you're trying to find out. So being mindful is one way, um, should I say, it was a big way of me coping up with all of the things happening around us. So I just focus, let's say, for example, if I'm playing Lego with my son, all my, all my thoughts and all my energy will be focused on that Lego making. And that's practically mindfulness. So now... Um, I used to have difficulty sleeping, but now when I put mindfulness, when I when I when I lay in the bed, when I when I lay in the bed, I can easily sleep in five minutes. It's just parang relaxing everything. So the level of attention on on anything, if it if it's cooking, it's just cooking for me. If it's if it's talking to you, Dinah, it's just talking to you. So I'm not even gonna think about tomorrow's project or nothing like that. So it's more of being focused. And I find it truly ano, um, life-changing in terms of practicing this mindfulness. So, yun. Oh. So five things. Oh. So ground yourself. Let me just, yeah. if, if you can allow me to summarize. Yeah, I, made, I made the list. Number one, 
surround yourself with positive people. That's why I'm talking to you, Dina. <laughs> Fill your mind with positive input. You yeah. always have a choice on what to put in your head. And then create a routine. You know, even the first hour that you wake up and then you, you started doing the routine, you feel accomplished already. And then be extra nice to other people because, you know, positivity will beget positivity. And then finally, practice mindfulness. So one thing at a time, because your multitasking is really going to put up the anxiety level on the next, to the highest level. So yes. I, I know that we were taught to do multitasking to be able to achieve so many things. But now I'm in, the, I'm in a phase of my life wherein I just want to do one thing at a time. If it's drinking coffee, so be it. I'm going to drink coffee the next 10 minutes, you know. And um, I, I will enjoy it. That because I drink coffee, it's in the, the body, that's it, diba? Right? But now I, I try to savor every minute. You know, I think that's, that's one gift. That, that um, this, this deadly, deadly um, disease that I got, you know, it can happen at any time. Um, and I, I want to say I love you to the people that I really love. I want to express my feelings to every person. So, I, and I'm just glad. Kaya, Dina, the time that I was told now you can, that I can fly, I flew to, to the U.S. to be with my parents. So, I got my passport at 12 noon. I was booking the flight at 1 o'clock. At 4 o'clock, I was on the way to the airport. So, oh. <laughs> I just needed to be with my parents. And I am so lucky that my husband understood that. My, my, my other son understood that. That I need to be with my parents at that time. So, I stayed there. And then, um, me and my, my youngest one, we stayed there for three months. And it was really joyful to be with. Because, I mean, I cannot imagine... If I have a child who had cancer and being far from me, I, I, I would die, you know. I can, I'm putting my, 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 myself into my mom's possession and I just want to hug her the moment that I was able to. So that's exactly what we did. Wow, so, it, yeah. this is so amazing. <laughs> Look, uh, Abby, I've known you for many, many years as an image consultant and I already look up to you because your beauty is so regal, very dignified, and you're not snooty, you're humble, and you're everybody's friend. There's no mean bone in your body. So I already really, really look up to you for that. But guess what? Uh, this might be online, but I can see, I, I can see all the many, many other positive qualities that, in fact, it's so focused now. Yeah, because this is probably an example of the mindfulness because now I'm so focused with you. There's no other one here. It's you and I here. And I can see how much lovelier you are because this is, I, I'm, not, I'm not just enamored by what I see. Facial, no, it's your spirit. It's, it's your kindness. It's your sincerity, your humility. And I love your love of life. I, I love it that that you welcome everything that happened to your life. And as a matter of fact, you be, you're becoming the better for it. So God has used that. And now, how can people reach you? Because look, Abby, I'm sure some of our viewers would really want to know more. I mean, look, the five... The five steps that you just showed us, you, you summarize and you explain, that is already a big deal. I'm sure some people are, have scribbled, will be scribbling notes for this, but guess what? There will still be some who want to really maybe consult you, uh, maybe one-on-one -on -one online, not just the webinar. So, okay, please tell us. How do people connect with you? Oh, sorry. Right. My son just told me that I'm actually Googleable, so that's good. So if you Google my name, Abigail Arenas, it will give you a bunch of ways on how to get in touch with me. Or you can actually send me a personal message through Messenger. So I'm on Facebook, Abigail Arenas. And then you can also send me an email at personify at gmail.com. And then Dino will... 
be nice enough to to put it here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So um, get in touch with me with whatever you you want to talk about, or if you want to invite me for for a training. I'm I'm working, and uh, you know I, I'm still up for it. But uh, now, Diana, there's more into my training. It's well, of course, we should, I will still do the professional image development, no problem. The personality development, no problem. But now there is more more um parang parang finding ourselves, right? So there's there's more to that now. I think I think I can speak directly from the heart when I say life is beautiful and in life is something that we can appreciate more. So it's there. It's there, Daleta. Yeah. Honestly, Abby, I find my uh, our engagement now very enriching because it's, it's not just my mind. I, I learn from listening to you, you know, interacting with you, but also my spirit and my heart is full and is singing. I, I'm so happy that you accepted our invitation to be our speaker. Oh my goodness. So, um, Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard Abby, and I'm sure that you can just directly get in touch with her, and she will be a very welcoming person for that. You heard her. Yes, you can reach out to her. And watch out for episode nine of our Leaders Edge Forum, because we also have, coming up next is Josh Ramos, who will talk on fresh oxygen in a battle, which is really good news because of pandemic here and there. So you can just uh, now reach out because they're the exclusive distributors of this. So um, now remember also that to, you need to go click, like, subscribe the Leaders Edge channel in YouTube by S-E-A-S-T-B-I and learning my friends learning is a never-ending journey with limitless vistas thank you abby thank you thank you so much diana i love you diana to me too really.